what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the all new GMK Tech K4. In the past we've taken a look at a lot of these GMK Tech mini PCs but nothing's going to compare to the performance that the K4 is going to be putting out because this is powered by a brand new Ryzen 7000 series APU. In fact it's the most powerful APU on the market the Ryzen 9 7948HS. And with that, we get those brand new Radeon 780M graphics based on our DNA 3. Plus, this has 5600 megahertz RAM. It's running in dual channel, and you can get this up to 32 gigs from their website, but it supports up to 64. I'm actually really excited to show you how this tiny PC performs, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. Now, I've actually been using this site for a long time now. They do offer PC games from Steam, Uplay, Ubisoft. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use the site is for their Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. These are activation keys that you can pick up really cheap. And right now at checkout, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. And this 30% discount will be going on until the end of August. So with this discount, you can pick one of these Windows 10 Pro activation keys up for $15.58. And don't forget, you can use PayPal to check out on their website. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Inside of the box with the new GMK Tech K4, you're going to get a 6 foot HDMI cable. We've also got a mounting system here, comes with all the hardware we need to get this mounted up, and a 120 watt power supply. I'll tell you, the K4 isn't going to pull 120 watts from the wall, but I've seen a lot of manufacturers with these new 7000 series HS mini PCs adding these 120 watt power supplies just to be safe. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two full size USB 3.2 ports plus USB 4.0. And this is using 40 gigabit protocol, so we can do an eGPU on this mini PC very easily. Not much going on around the sides here, but moving around back, we've got two HDMI 2.0 ports, another USB 3.2 port, a single USB 2.0 port, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. GMK Tech is offering the K4 Mini PC fully configured or bare bones over on their website. And I wanted to give you a quick look at the internals, really easy to get in here. We can snap the top right off and then we have access to our PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD and dual channel DDR5 RAM. So if you wanted to get out cheaper up front, you could pick up the bare bones model and easily add your own RAM and storage. But this one came configured and as you can see right out of the box, this did come with crucial RAM. And of course, we have to take a look at the main specs, but like I mentioned, we've got the new AMD Ryzen 9 7948HS. This is based on Zen 4, so we've got 8 Zen 4 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 4 GHz, and a max boost up to 5.2. With this, we get the new Radeon 780M iGPU, based on RDNA 3 with 12 compute units, and this does run at up to 2800 MHz since we've got the HS variant. Again, you can pick this up bare bones with no RAM and storage, but this one came with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 MHz and it will support up to 64 gigs if you wanted to go bare bones and add your own. We've got one M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 SSD, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.2. And for the operating system, I'm going to be running Windows 11, but keep in mind, I mean, we've got an x86 PC here, so if you wanted to go with Linux, it would be super easy to install it. So far, everything's been working out great. Haven't run into any issues. I've got a lot of games and some benchmarks that we're going to be testing out. And of course, it's a very fast system. That 7940HS isn't anything to scoff at. And with this, we do get that 5600MHz RAM, which helps out with that 780M iGPU. But one of the first things I was really curious about with this mini PC was just what TDP this is running at. The 7940HS can go up to around 85 watts in some cases if it's set up correctly. But given the cooling system here, this is actually set at 45 watts out of the box with a boost up to around 54. So from uh, CPU-Z, just run a stress test here. You'll see that this jumps right up to 45 watts, but while gaming, I've seen it boost up to around 54. 
Would have been nice if we could go up to 65, and of course, using a third-party application, you could definitely up the TDP, but I'm going to leave it right where it is, out of the box. But that doesn't stop it from being a really fast setup, and, you know, if you wanted to use this as an everyday PC for web browsing, 4K video playback, email checking, you could do some photo editing and light video editing on this, then you'd be more than happy with this little machine here, just with the iGPU. These new Ryzen 7000 series APUs really put out some great performance, and especially that 7940HS. And the clock on the GPU with this one actually goes up to 2800MHz instead of 27 with something like the uh, 7840U or the 7840HS. So we do have a bit of a boost on that iGPU clock, and with this setup running at 45 watts with a boost up to around 54, I wanted to take a look at what kind of benchmark scores we could get out of this. And first on the list, we've got Geekbench 6, single core coming in strong with a 2,464. Multi, also looking really great here with a 9,427. But keep in mind, this chip will do much better if we were to up the wattage. We're at kind of a base TDP of 45 with this one. Next, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Night Raid coming in with a 29,892. Firestrike, 7,304. And finally, Time Spy with a 3070. Looking great here, and it's definitely on par with other 7940HS mini PCs that we've tested. But again, we are at that 45 watt TDP. Taking this up to 65 watts would definitely unlock a little bit of performance. But I think it's doing a great job the way it's set up right now with these synthetics. But, you know, we definitely need to test out some real world gaming. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here's Street Fighter 6, we're at 1080p medium settings, and uh, this new 7000 series chipset does a really great job with fighting games. Injustice 2 is also going to run, same settings. Mortal Kombat 11, medium, 1080p, 60fps, and some of the older stuff can go up to 1440p. If you still play Street Fighter 5, 1440p, high is totally possible. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, high settings, and when I go to high, I do turn off ray tracing, so keep that in mind, there is no ray tracing. Once you go to the preset at high, it takes ray tracing to medium. These Ryzen APUs just don't like ray tracing, and with that off, it still looks absolutely amazing at these high settings, and we can get an average of around 73 FPS. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're maxing out around 54 watts. God of War 900p original settings. This is one that I always like to test on these APUs and we are getting much better performance out of this game than we were with 4000 or 5000. Obviously we've got a much more powerful iGPU here but it's still not perfect because when you take this up to 1080p you will need to drop those settings down to low to get an average 60 out of it. Looks like with Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered, with the latest updates, we've seen a nice little boost in performance on these iGPUs. In the past, you know, when this chip was initially released, we had to go down to 720p low, but now we can actually run this at 1080p low, and usually I lock this at 60, but with this setup here and the latest update, it's actually running much better than it ever has. With Horizon Zero Dawn, I just use the built-in benchmark, goes over everything we need to see here. 1080p original settings, we got an average of 74 FPS out of this little machine, which is more than playable. Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and with this I did have to drop it down to 900p low, or you could use Fidelity Cast at 1080p, it's really up to you, but at low, 900p, average of 72 FPS. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low settings, and this isn't the low preset. You actually have to go in and take all of the settings down the low to see this kind of performance on an iGPU. But I still think it looks pretty decent here. We're at 1080p, and I get an average of around 74 FPS with this machine at 54 watts. Total system power consumption is something I always like to test with these PCs, so while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall, and while the K4 is idling in performance mode, it pulls around 11 watts, not too bad, average gaming jumps up to 67, and the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 79 watts. 
Another thing to keep in mind here with these power consumption figures is the TDP on this is stock, 45 watts with a boost up to 54. This could pull a lot more if we were to up that TDP and we could definitely see a nice little bump in performance. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know in the comments below. But overall, I think GMK Tech here has done a great job with the new Nookbox K4. It is the most powerful mini PC that they offer right now. And uh, of course, next year, there's going to be a more powerful APU the year after that. That's just how it works. But this does outperform all of their others right now because we've got that 7948HS. Really like the form factor here. It is coming in a bit smaller than some of these other newer Ryzen 9 powered mini PCs. And uh, cooling system does handle that 45 watt. Taking it up might stress it out a bit, but like I mentioned, you know, if you want me to make a video running this at 65 watts, just let me know and I can definitely come up with something. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more about the new GMK Tech Nookbox K4, I will leave some links in the description. Remember, you can pick this up with uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD or bare bones. Add your own RAM and storage. You can get out cheaper up front that way, but you know, with the way RAM prices are, especially with DDR5, it might make sense to just go ahead and get one that's already fully loaded. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. Like always, thanks for watching.